<laughs> See, I told you <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the wrap. So, here we go. Okay, so we can do that. Wait a minute. Hi. Hello. Hello. Tell me which one you want, and I'll be the first one, yeah. That's it. Four. Pass. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Hi, um, okay, my name's John Chase. Um, my MC name, because I needed an MC name when I done this, because I couldn't use John Chase the rapper. Um, um, so I, I came up, because I was doing astronomy stuff at the time, I came up with the name Oort Kuiper. Um, and in case some of you may or may not know, solar system, sun's in the middle, you keep on going out, you get to where Pluto is, that's the Kuiper belt, a thousand times further, that's the Oort cloud. So um, I chose these names because it's the geekiest rap name ever, and I can't be honest. Um, but uh, to give you a little idea about what I do, I thought I'd just start with this rap. So it's um, like the reason I've do, done these raps is because I want you to get people to engage with science in different ways. I've got a degree in aerospace engineering. I've got a degree in science and science fiction. You can ask me about that later if you want. It's really <laughs> interesting, more interesting than you probably ever imagine. And then I went on to science communication. So while I was doing a Master's in Science Communication, I actually ended up doing a rap that I'm going to show you in a bit called Astrobiology. And I've done it for a NASA magazine, so it ended up 
becoming a big thing. So this has now become one of my day jobs um, to rap about science. For three degrees, I rap about science. So, there you go. Um, so I do this to try and get people into science. And this particular one was done for the National HE STEM program. And they asked me to do a rap to show guys what type of careers they could do in STEM. So this is called STEM, but I'm going to ask for your help. Target that guy there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So um, it's sometimes often embarrassing, but all you've got to do is say technology at the end. I'm going to say, what do you know about STEM, mathematics and science, engineering? And you guys go, technology. <laughs> you think you can do that? Yeah. So I, I normally get you to say science, engineering, and technology, but I'm being easier. <laughs> right. So just be technology. So just try, just to make sure you're all. I get over the embarrassment, which you know about STEM, <laughs> mathematics and science, engineering. Technology. Oh, fantastic. Oh, this is going to be great. This is right. <laughs> so, just remember, my name is Ford Kaifa, and this is a little video to tell you about what I do. Yes, man. I think I like to be a doctor, oh, miss. And you, Miss? Hmm, miss. I think I want to be a politician. Very good. Me? I want to be a number loving scientist. <laughs> 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 When I was younger, I thought I'd be a fireman. But now I'm older, I don't know where that fire went. Then I thought I could talk for the government. Carry out my work for society's benefit. Now that I'm not a kid, my choice is important. A real opportunity to broaden my options. What could I be if I want to make a difference? Maybe an engineer? How about science? When I did it for my GCSEs, it never seemed to be something I'd achieve easily. But time and effort can boost the abilities. I guess it depends on how much that it means to me. Please to see these new medications. I would have been a doctor if I only had the patience. <laughs> okay, it's your part now. What do you know about STEM? Mathematics and science, engineering, technology. If you take a look back through the history, science and maths. Ah, uh, more maths. When I first wrote this, it was SCT because the things that get kids into science have changed names. So they brought in maths. They thought maths was important. So instead of being set and set point, it got changed to STEM. STEM. <laughs> they make observations and build estimations or explanations based on known information. So, what do you know about STEM? Mathematics and science, engineering, technology. Right? If you take a look back through history, science and maths are both to solve mysteries. What do you know about STEM? Mathematics and science, engineering, technology. Main foundations on a firm ground and find new ways to adapt the surroundings. As SCT, but don't forget mathematics, but in numbers on the world, helping us to understand it. As one plus one to some of the basis of counting, multiplication, the division and subtracting. Maths is like a weapon that can help us understand how to spend our money better or measure a plot of plans. The profit is the tax line we kept it closer at. Well, astronomers and calendars that gave us really plans. Maths is a study that can help us to relate different quantities, structures, spaces, and change, measuring and calculating motions and shapes to reveal the hidden patterns that the universe makes. So the study in the shapes of Pythagoras' theorem could have better been the decimals, powers of ten. Was it there in the beginning? But we'll stick it on the end. With the maths now, the SCT is called STEM. What do you know about STEM? Mathematics and science, engineering, technology. If you take a look back through history, science has helped us understand mysteries. What do you know about STEM? Mathematics and science, engineering, technology. Lay foundations on a firm ground and find new ways to adapt the surroundings. So look around for a slice of the sciences. See them everywhere. There's a world of appliances, new devices, and enticing images. Healthcare pharmacies and all types of physicists making gadgets and telecommunications, the new ways to copy and store information, exploring the universe to learn how it functions, the physics of the particles, the matters in motion. Even the notion of realistic graphics requires that we have an understanding of the physics, but then a bit of chemistry is just as fantastic. The CDs and consoles are molded for plastics. Many bowls make the most of a chemist. Just check your deodorant for any cosmetics, complicated chemicals, and stuff they invented. You know, materials you never have expected. So, what do you know about STEM? Mathematics and 
engineering, technology. If you take a look back from history, science has helped us understand history. What do you know about STEM, mathematics, and science? Engineering, technology. Lay foundations on a firm ground in a finely ways to adapt the surroundings. But when I finish my raps, I'll only go like this. <laughs> if you liked it, then you can clap. Types of science, even do stuff for maths. I've done some maths raps channel for learning, and that was cool. About 30 maths stuff, multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, they're really cool. But today, Mark asked me, Have you got anything on biology and evolution? But well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, I looked at it and thought, Actually, um, yeah, I've got three that I do, two that I've done for GCSE bite size that I never perform anywhere, and another one that's so long. I've just never tried to remember it until today. <laughs> uh, so it may go good or not. I'm going to save that until later. So I'm going to put on one that I like. <clears throat> this one's about genetics. Yeah. And obviously, this is very relevant to what you guys do. Ooh! Oh, I've just got an idea. I've never done this before. This is the first time ever. <laughs> ever. Just like we've done just now. But I'm going to go. <laughs> Let's talk about jeans. And I don't, and you guys gotta go, I don't mean trousers. <laughs> yeah? All yeah. right, right, right. right. <laughs> okay, see you okay. When it comes down to it, I'll have my hands in the air, so don't worry, you know when. <laughs> so let's talk about jeans. Don't be countless amount is in life all around us, but how to account for life's behaviors and structures is a question that's received many answers in cultures. The development of life does long cause confusion, but Charles Darwin wrote a book that offered a solution on the origin of species was his way of introducing how life had survived by surviving evolution. And each different thing had to come from a parent, and each generation can become a bit different. Gregor Mendel was the first to show how this happened by cross feeding bee plants and pondering the patterns. In 1953, Watson and Crick was on the case. They were the dynamic duo that discovered DNA. Must be in a spiral helix like a spiral staircase with E starting to seize and E's paired with A. So let's talk about genes and I don't know about jean trousers. As a key feature of characteristics, they can help identify kids and relatives. So we need to be reflecting on the benefits. Talk about genes and I don't know about jean trousers. Be informed then the debate in the ethics. Just remember it's okay to be a skeptic, but work with the facts and be fair as a critic. We all have traits passed on through inheritance, traits that are built from genetic instructions. Some are recessive, but others are dominant. When it comes to species, the genes of the government. From a single cell, your identity can be known. The information is stored on the chromosomes. With 23 pairs in nearly every cell you own, they're bundled in the nucleus. That's their home. Now, chromosome pairs have particular schemes and sequence along them are different genes. With the rest of the cell, they form a team that turns amino acids into proteins. The proteins are vital to life everywhere, from the blood in your veins and your growth and repair but genes can mutate or become impaired and create proteins that harm our welfare. So let's talk about genes and like don't mean trousers as a key feature of characteristics. They can help identify kids and relatives. So we need to be reflecting on the benefits. Talk about genes and like don't mean trousers to be informed when debating the ethics. Just remember it's okay to be a skeptic, but work with the facts and be fair as a critic. Over the years, many have peered through microscopes, learning how genes get built through genetic codes. But a gene doesn't read like a horoscope. It can tell you a future, but it can't be a little hope. Look people are linked to diseases as random mutations cause flaws in sequences, replacing those genes with hope for gene therapies. Like ironing out claims and ironing out the creases. To increase that chance of illness is pleasing. Like hay fever tablets to help avoid season. But for genetic war disorders, there's a way of feeling potential risks in our lifetime. It's called genetic screening. I hear some of you screaming out to sign a baby. Now we cheat in nature by resorting to technology. To use genetic engineering, we must use it ethically by making sure we know the risks of using such a remedy. Talk about genes and like green trousers as a key feature of characteristics. They can help identify kids and relatives. So we need to be reflecting on the benefits. Talk about genes and I don't mean trousers. To be informed and debate in the ethics. 
Just remember, it's okay to be a skeptic, but work with the facts to be fair as a critic. So that was done for the GAMI project. They'll come up in a bit in Wales to get more kids to know about genetics. So that was my genetics track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, some people ask how do I remember all of these lyrics, and I say I'm really not sure. Um, <laughs> I try hard and hard over and over again. I find repetition really helps, and even though I've written them, it takes me ages to learn them. So I will miss some lyrics if it sounds like the lyrics come out backwards, like. It doesn't make it more, it makes it less. I probably meant less, I just said more. <laughs> you, can see, you can see them all on YouTube, so you can go and check it out for yourself, do a bit of research. <laughs> Confirm it for yourself, brilliant. <laughs> so, um, I think we're doing about osmosis now. So osmosis is good. Now, this is another one done for GCSE Bite Size, so I, I, I kind of had to download the video and put it in the background. It's really low quality. Believe it or not, I don't actually have a copy of the whole thing myself, <coughs> so I'm a bit upset about that. So I'm going to write to them and uh, request one. So it's low quality, but I thought it's better to have the video than no video. So um, this is about osmosis, um, as I'm sure many of you are probably aware of. <coughs> I'll let you click, of course, you do it better than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every cell applies the ability to separate the stuff that is inside from the stuff in which it operates. But water penetration is permitted through the membrane because it's partially permeable. But very small holes permit to molecules of water, any bigger molecules to simply get caught up across a barrier. Molecules make a migration from a region of a higher to a lower concentration. That's the concentration gradient between two solutions in osmosis as water with various inclusions. We use the word solvent for whatever it has to solve in. And the word solid forever is suffused in. If two solutions are the same, we call them isotonic. If concentrations are isotonic solutions. If the solute level is high, then we call it hypertonic. If it's relatively low, then we call it hypotonic. Okay, so osmosis works slightly different in plants and animal cells. So now this verse is about plant and animal cells. Using a microscope, it's easy to tell that there's not a cell wall around an animal cell, only in plants, but they got a membrane as well. And it's osmosis that makes it either shrivel or swell to take a red blood cell and stick pure water on it, which is lower in solute, so we call it hypotonic. But with no cell wall, the cell swells until the sides fits. The membrane is burst, and the word for this is lysis. There's another concentration, the water moves out of the cell, we call this cremation. For felt cell, we must look at things differently. The added cell wall gives it strength and rigidity. Water flows in, but extra pressure won't burst it. The cell becomes rigid and its centers be turgid. In reverse, then the membrane shrinks from the sides, making the cell go flaccid because it's plasmolized. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So you can see these ones are really instructional. Um, now there was one about photosynthesis, but it's so hard for me to actually get it right that I thought I'd put it aside. <laughs> um, so I might do it as a little poem later, because it's easier when it's slow. And the one thing I've noticed is trying to keep up with the beat. It means if you miss anything, you can't, you just got to find the next space. So this is the hardest thing about doing these raps. But I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> okay, so which one will go next? Okay. Oh. Now is an important point. I wasn't going to do it before, but then I heard two guys mention the word astrobiology earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, in different places now. Right, um, yeah, so I thought, because we've got a lot of biologists here, I learned about astrobiology a few years back. Um, and it changed my mind. Like, uh, basically, do aliens exist? What's the scientific search for aliens? Astrobiology. And all of the different disciplines that are needed to do astrobiology <laughs> totally amazed me. And when I got a chance to actually meet the guys, after doing this track, they invited me over to Washington, to Seattle, to actually sit in a conference to talk about how different ways of getting astrobiology across. Now, funnily enough, on YouTube, I done a video, and I, I, I was everywhere based on it. I got a quarter of a million hits. If you look at anything else about astrobiology, <laughs> you haven't got a quarter of a million hits. <laughs> 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 that's because of me. <laughs> yeah, so I love that. I thought that was amazing. So this is biology, but um, biology, biology in space. And as someone did mention on the YouTube account, uh, biology in space, but we are in space. 
very good point. So we are astrobiology as well. It's just that the biology that you learn is just only astrobiology to aliens, perhaps. <laughs> In a way. So um, this is astrobiology. It's got three different music types. Um, I hope I don't shock you with music types. But you know, it's going to be different. So this is my first ever video, and I unashamedly just took the images of YouTube and anywhere I could find them. We even see the live of YouTube going on the bottom. That's how budget it was. <laughs> Some of the biggest questions that's ever been asked. Do you know where life's going? Can you tell where it starts? We've been on Earth for many years and we're still producing answers. As time passes, collective knowledge advances. He set targets to raise hopes for the future with mathematical modeling on the computer. Bring statistics to make it hard to dispute the length of time it took life to evolve here. The origin of life is hotly debated. Some say evolved, but some say created. Choice is up to you, it just depends on how you weigh it. The life start on Earth and it's all life related. So then it's everything. Oh. No, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> ah, here you go, thank you. I'm gonna catch back in because I wanna say it when communicated properly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> so uh, I was trying to read my lips and I was like, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, take two. I'm going to get it right this time. <laughs> Some of the biggest questions that's ever been asked. Do you know where life's going? Can you tell where it starts? We've been on Earth for many years and we're still producing answers. As time passes, collective knowledge advances. We set targets and raise hopes for the future. With mathematical modeling on the computer brings statistics to make it hard to dispute the length of time to life to evolve here. The origin of life is hotly debated. Some say evolved, some say created. The choice is up to you, it just depends on how you weigh it. The life start on Earth and it's all life related. So differentiate the life forms into species. Now it's just a label, DNA is in the deep freeze, got a complete these. Genome, family trees, like Mr. Mendel for pondering peace. Study life on Earth, then you do in biology. But in space, it's called looking for life in the rest of the galaxy. With interplanetary, the origins of life still don't know the chronology, but digging up clues with I didn't know about, but now I'm here to talk about. I believe that this nation is committed to achieving the goal of this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him to the safety of the Earth. 1957, check the date, when NASA's brought Russell Atlas started the space age. Two superpowers and a cold war mandate. A year late, and NASA's foundations were late. Part of the first step, rockets need an upgrade. Four lunar travel by the end of the next decade. Are we looking for life? No, I'm not on this landscape. Well, where should we look? Better ask Frank Drake. Let's try to find a star similar to the sun, where we might find a planet similar to our own, where conditions lie perfect in a Goldilocks zone. But what about planet X? We better leave that alone. The further from the heat source, the colder the home. But life can survive in its dreams, so the evidence is shown. We're finding life, not intelligence, and genetic inheritance, but alien communication. How do we know? So be life on Earth, then we're doing biology. But in space, it's called looking for life in the rest of the galaxy with interplanetary. The origins of life still don't know the chronology, but digging up clues with, yeah, I didn't know about, but now I'm here to chat about. Okay, so the first verse is the introduction of evolution. Second verse is about how we get up there. The last verse is about mythology and ideas and how they come together to what we understand about aliens or actual biology. A story about the world. Carl Sagan, by the way. Those worlds in space are as countless as all the grains of sand on all the beaches of the earth. Each of those worlds is as real as ours. Countless worlds, enormous worlds, and an immensity of space and time. 
for millennia. We dabbled in astronomy, but not to me. For some, but still, the mind is always wondering, searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. You listen to radio, but the signal stays silent. Only alien I've seen is in a science fiction story, in an alien autopsy, or some other kind of movie. So look for the biology, not the mythology. It's eyes into space for some astrobiology. These methodologies to determine the distance to stars and how hot they're burning. But when I say Doppler, I'm not speaking German. I'm referring to a shift in the light spectrum. From all the methods, this would be the best one to find big worlds and other star systems. Exoplanets that fit the description. Is anyone dead? Well, that's the question. Study life on Earth that you're doing biology. But in space, it's called looking for life in the rest of the galaxy with interplanetary <laughs> the origins of life still don't know the chronology but they get enough clues with <laughs> i didn't know about <laughs> but now i'm here to talk about <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> So it was really important when I done this one was because I realized I had a lot of friends who believe in aliens. And my view was like, yeah, but everyone believes in aliens, but don't have wouldn't aliens have pets? We've got pets, we've got animals, we've got beasts of burden. Yeah. Um, I think he was talking about Jared Diamond earlier, the other guy. I read a book called Guns, Gems and Steel. And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, it's totally changed my view of the whole world. When I was making this, I realized my friends who believe in aliens won't take on anything scientific. Because scientists tell them it's not true and that you can't have fun going out and running from crop circles and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I didn't want to put them down. I don't like to do that. Yeah. And also, I come from a religious background. I was raised a Christian. I was raised in church. So when I went back with this, I heard my mum goes. I heard somebody say, "Oh, Jonathan is trying to say that we all came from monkeys or something." And I when. <laughs> so when I wrote this, I deliberately made sure I didn't try and alienate anyone. Alienate. Not. No pun intended. But, um, <laughs> so when you hear me say um, the origin of life is slightly debated, some say evolved, some say created, it's because I'm recognizing that in the whole history of humanity, science weren't always there. So we've always had different beliefs. And I don't want people to think I'm telling them what to believe. I want them to go and make up their minds for themselves. So don't look at the mythology, look at the biology, but whatever works for you, it's good. So I don't want to change anyone's viewpoints, but I kind of feel like to like science and take it up. But I, I try and keep it as open as possible because I heard. As, part, as a science communicator, sometimes telling something that's really contrary to someone will cause them to run even further. So you've got to bring them in gently. So I try and do that in some of my raps. Um, I've got one here now called A Better View. Now this one was done for the Science Photo Library. They provide really beautiful images and high definition um, pictures like these ones. You came from the Science Photo Library, yeah? Okay. Um, and they asked me to do a video to summarize all of their lovely images. So I've got some images here. Now, just to let you know how it goes, the first verse is about the universe, how science and technology is giving us a better view of the universe. And then it's how we've got a better view of life on Earth. Then it's how we've got a better view of ourselves. So that's the three different verses. Hope you enjoy. The universe is the oldest thing that we know. It started in the big expansion many years ago. The heat was so intense that mostly photons reached the show. But everything was cooling as the space began to grow. Eventually, the particles cooled into atoms of hydrogen and helium dispersing at random. Some of them gathered under gravity's attraction, becoming the stars of the galaxy's mansion. The number of inhabitants numbers in the billions. Each star's size, mass, and temperature is different. Our star has a family we call a solar system. Planets and the moons and even rings going around them. The bigger outer planets are all mostly made of gas. There's asteroids, rockets, and giant clouds of dust. The rocky planet Mars gets its color from rust, and it's half the size of Earth without the liquid on its crust. We left Earth's cradle, landed on the moon. The satellites in orbit of other worlds, too. Looking through the lenses to get a better view of the things that are distant or really minute. It's nanotechnology, robots on route, and silicon chips helping us to compute. As the world spins round and round and round through the days, the future is all up to you. 
Life in the universe, everything in cycles, days into seasons, years into lifetimes. Birth is the start point, death is at the end time, but everything decays as we move forward in time. Earth is a system that's always in motion, mixing up the elements and causing commotion. Volcanic lava flows caress the oceans, coastlines shaped by the force of erosion. The Earth's environment is perfect for life, containing all the elements you need to survive. Life thrives in the oceans, soars through the skies while standing up in animals to avoid legalized. Many life forms disappear through mass extinctions caused by an ice age or comet's collision. But for all of the survivors who are still in existence, the genes are a record of them traveling the distance. We left Earth's cradle, landed on the moon, the satellites in orbit of other worlds too. Looking through the lenses to get a better view. Things that are distant or really minute. There's nanotechnology, robots on roof, and silicon chips helping us to compute. As the world spins round and round and round through the days, the future is all up to you. The cleverest life form and Earth's humankind's put the rising population on the graph. See it climb? Our towns are illuminated, so are the skies. The familiar nights are brightened by the amber lights. Petroleum extracted by the work of the donkeys. But we shall make use of more renewable energy. Electricity is vital to modern society. Society is sent along the pylons or stored up in batteries in the laboratories where science is embedded. Many different particles are scattered and defected. Using MRI scans, a brain is detected, or with a broken bone, an x ray is recommended. We know that bacteria is the way we get infected, and how our inner bodies are so wonderfully connected. The bones and the muscles and the skin that surrounds it is giving us the form that we all walk around in to leave Earth's cradle, landing on the moon, putting satellites in orbit of other worlds too. Looking through the lenses to get a better view of the things that are distant, really minute. There's nanotechnology, robots on roof, and silicon chips helping us to compute. As the world spins round and round and round through the days, the future is all up to you. Thank you. Right. Woo. Now it comes. To the epic. <laughs> this one, uh, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be live. This one is extremely epic. I'm gonna try and describe to you how epic it is. I had this idea. How far back would an autobiography go? I thought, if life were to write an autobiography, where would it end? So it could end as me. It's all right, isn't it? How did I get here? Well, that's the story of life. How did you get here? That's the story of life. And like through learning astronomy, and then learning about how the world came about, and then finding out that somewhere along the line after that, life evolved. I thought, that's amazing. So, oh, oh no, no, go back, go back. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Is it doing it? Oh, oh to go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning, too. Just that black screen. I know that, that, that shouldn't be clear. Wow! Oh, it's made it up on a iTunes. Wow! <laughs> you can always rely on technology. <laughs> 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 oh, no, no, what's happening? Um, right, so the clock. Yeah, start. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, here we go. Because it's got this man. So, obviously, everything started. You know, you had the whole universe, then you had stars, then you had planets around them. And at some point, life evolved. I thought I'd write the history of life from the very beginning to the end. No mean feat. <laughs> so I researched it, I got some biologist friends involved, I asked them to give me information on what's going on, and I came up with this rap. It's got 152 lines long, almost seven minutes. It's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm try my best. Okay, here we go. So, okay. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Yeah, I've got this before that. Right. Okay. According to my current, according to my current, according to my current scientific train of thought, this 
planet is the place I was originally born. The surface was a battlefield and heaven dropped the bombs. Who would think this hell is hitter land to be my future home? But the seeds of my conception had already been sown in the molecules of nature that had covered the globe. When the several things of nature that had covered the globe, but how they turned into me, I just really don't know. As the non living organic carbon based molecules mingled together for half a billion years, I suddenly appeared as something living. This abiogenesis is the beginning of the story that I'm telling here. I started as a simple cell and settled for a while, devouring and replicated into different styles and domains of archaea and bacteria, but living as a chemical in the water tropic hyperfermophile. <laughs> <laughs> But then many generations building up my fitness. But when I started dabbling in all this photosynthesis, how was I to know I would become my nemesis? As I captured the CM2, ripping up the carbon, I made my own sugars as a food for surviving. But the rising oxygen levels that I had been supplying was a poison to my early life, and so I was declining. Now, halfway along the timeline of my life, for the 3,600 million year ride, I was making new cells with the nucleus inside, and then compelled to divide is where I kept my design. I was known as eukaryo, meaning true nucleus. So a prokaryo is what exists without this. And after things started reproducing through sex, I became multicellular and more complex. Just as things are heating up, the world started to freeze. On a snowball, earth and ice covering the seas. But above appeared the ozone made from O3 that detected my delicate cells from UV radiation. So now I could emerge from the ocean as the glaciers retreated and the world got less frozen. I developed many new configurations, and that presence everywhere is called the Cambrian Explosion. I've grown my main branches of my family tree, and it's all my new forms in primordial seas. But now, we're half a billion years before JC, I'm venturing onto the land on my primitive feet. So, as plant stayed put, I was roaming the beach, leaving tracks like a millipede. See, that's me, but there was no plants or land because they were still in the sea with vertebrates getting jaws and developing teeth. See, beneath the water surface, I received the good start. To the top of my food chain is a predatory shark. The land was dominated to my seed bearing plants, but along with the insects who joined in the dance, I even found a way to travel using four limbs. These tetrapods evolved on my amphibians. Then the reptiles appeared on the land, stepping in with a new type of epigen, a special outer skin. I even started flying as an insect doing air stunts, but then a big catastrophe, my biggest disappearance. I'm trying not to cry and reminisce the years. Experience 250 million years before your presence, the Permian, the Triassic, or ET intermission. The 76% of marine species went missing, while 78% on land was wiped from existence. That's why I call this event the mother of all extinctions. <laughs> <laughs> but life, as you know, isn't easy to hold back. It keeps on going, doesn't it? Okay. But still I kept on going, I'm not that easy to terminate. Success of my existence is inheritance of DNA. It took me many millions of years to recuperate. Now it's the age of dinosaurs, my first flying vertebrates. These vertebrates who soared over all of the animals. Saw land from angles that for hunt is more practical. The turtles and the first flies during the life's battle. I celebrated the appearance of my first mammals. But again, within the ocean, all is not right. The land have been shifting, but I'm putting up a fight. It's extinction to 50% marine life, but I've learned adaptation is the way to survive. Whilst early butterflies are lost, called Lepidoptera, plucked by the birds, something jungles of conifers. The land is Jurassic, no park, no Attenborough. 150 million years before your calendar. Now the Jurassic has been over to the Cretaceous, the chalky age, when the white cliffs were created. The biggest ever reptiles have land dominated, and the birds are quick to vary as they spread and radiated. And the first ants, termites, and snakes were encountered, while bees co evolved to boost the reproductive power of the angiosperms, the new plants that grew flowers. The seeds and the fruit that was easily devoured. My survival on this planet seems reliable, but looking in the sky, shining light, is that a fireball? <laughs> Dust cloud, I can't see the sky no more. It's gonna be the end, that's okay. Then my dinosaurs, that was 65 million years into the past, and the chick should be created with the relic from the blast. And although about three quarters of my species were lost, the rest diversified. I guess that everything has got a cost. And then, some reptiles survived in a way that's encouraging, becoming modern birds and their numbers are flourishing. I'm hovering above and I can see my life recovering as insects. 
birds, birds and amphibians. But in amongst the landscape with my dense forest coverings, it is now my mammals who dominate the surroundings. With insects and meat eating parents out foraging and cubs that rely upon the breast for their nourishing. Knowledge in the years about the next 50 million, the mammals were the most astonishing in my opinion. They had the neocortex on the brain that was brilliant. They grew cemental functions, making mammals more resilient. They spread the dominion to the skies and to the oceans as bats and cetaceans, aka whales and dolphins, and the land was provoking the future forms up to the open, like marsupials, elephants, sea lions, and rodents. Now I'm at the moment where things are getting exciting in the order of the primates, which are still diversifying into monkeys, and then the greater apes that were divided into gorillas, chimpanzees, and which were divided. They arrived onto my liking, much to my liking, as a habit called by people, and it's a two legged walking. And then I'm trying to convert upon the time that they emerge as modern humans, but as yet, I'm still deciding. But brain size is rising. It's time for revolution. I'm handy with my mind and I'm sharp with good solutions. I'm mindful of the man of the safety to see pollution, but the rest of my story is better used up on the humans. Two are using primates, assuming you retire. They must have found it cold because they stepped in fighting fires. What a skill they acquired to be harnessing heat. But now, better in my story, I was starting to speak. Then language, singing music, sculpture, art, religion, agriculture sparks the Neolithic revolution, recreation, trade, war, and urbanization. Enjoying some freedom offered by some civilization. I think the full philosophy, although it's mostly lost to me, until I get a feed and check it out experimentally, I'm mentally the pinnacle of life throughout the centuries, developing science to understand what I'm meant to be. So, what's it mean to me? It's still a mystery. I'm teaching in the and recipes of my memory. I'm measuring the world and my place in its history. I'm the different types of technology, the steam engine, and then electrical energy, medical remedies, and computers. But it's not be that one thing's friend is another thing's enemy. It's like the humans survive at the expense of the rest of me. But I've got to hand it to them. They're strong in wisdom. Give them readers voice in these many years to listen. I spent millions of years on this earth in prison, so they took me into space on their planetary missions. One of my many afflictions was to feel mass extinction, but it's my diversity that's offering me resistance. And now I found a species with superior intelligence. I hope they use it properly to further our existence. And so it's over to you. So, that's it ladies and gentlemen, um, talk about yourselves and have a nice weekend.